To better understand the Fibonacci spiral, it's first helpful to remember time is displayed on the chart as moving horizontally from left to right. But when marking time ranges, it's common to use vertical lines to define a time period in order to refer to specific points in time on the horizontal x-axis. Price, on the other hand, is displayed on the y-axis, and of course, it can move both up and down. Usually, horizontal lines are used to refer to price in order to define ranges and mark specific prices on the y-axis. So it's quite normal to be familiar with these directions going up, down, right, and left. But since the Fibonacci spiral is related to both price and time, there is additional consideration to take note of other factors that relate to diagonal movement and, of course, curvatures. The Fibonacci spiral begins at the center with the starting point. A major factor on the overall size of the spiral is the end point, which is the second point of the spiral the first starting point extends straight to. This forms a straight line which extends out indefinitely. It can be referred to as the Fibonacci spiral's pointer. Eventually, this pointer intersects with the spiral. These markings can be useful when referring to how the spiral is oriented basically referring to the orientation of the spiral by the direction the pointer is facing. Like a compass, it can be facing up, pointing north. Keeping with the analogy going to the right is like pointing east. Pointing down is like facing south. A spiral's orientation defined by the pointer going to the left is similar to referring to a western direction and there could be orientations in all the positions in between, similar to how there can be northwest, northeast, southwest, and southeast directions. Since future movement on the chart will take place towards the right side, and price or whatever units the chart is in can go up and down, the main goal is to orient the spiral in such a way in order to arc and curve towards the right side, along with being an appropriate size based on the distance between the start and end point. Sounds simple enough, but the factors that go into deciding how a spiral is oriented depend heavily on the specific context of the chart. And often there's not just one single correct way. Usually there are multiple ways and options to apply the spiral. And it's not uncommon to see several variations of spiral orientations that identify similar areas of interest. Looking at lots of situations in the following examples will help you practice and become more familiar with the thought process in deciding how to orient a Fibonacci spiral.